In Rwanda last year, the Institute of Science and Technology of Rwanda, formerly the Kigali Institute of Science and Technology, granted diplomas to a special class. 18 out of 190 female scholarship students in a skills development project in science and technology received their diplomas, like Solange and Jennifer, who received scholarships to complete their master. Supported by AFDB, the African Development Bank, the Institute promotes women's access to the scientific and technical programs. It is so important because if you, 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 you can compare about the percentage of population in Rwanda, many are women. But if you go to higher running institutions, colleges, uh, there are few girls who join the, like, the higher running institutions. Her parents, of whom she is the pride and joy, own a hardware store on the outskirts of the capital. Aware of her luck, the young woman wants to participate in the construction of Rwanda. The first motivation, I'd like to become among the great lady, a great woman. Just a few years ago, access to such education would have been impossible for Jennifer. Just being in the College of Science and Technology itself shows like you're specializing in something that you really want. And it is like a dream, being an engineer. With the cost of her education now taken care of, she'll be able to fulfill her ambition. My hope for the future is I'm going to do plumbing. After I finish school, I'm going to join some construction company where I'm going to do plumbing as an intern. With that, I'll be a professional plumber with hopes of having my own plumbing company. For his part, Kenneth is working on the use of recycled materials in architecture. He's presenting his project to his teachers. His ambition is to speed up the construction of buildings in his country, which is struggling to find the necessary materials. I see it as a challenge, like uh, if we are a developing country and uh, we have little economy to afford these materials which can be used for fancy buildings, in other, how in other way can an architect explore local and available materials and using literal technology but offer the space which is having quality and functional and sustainable for the community. When not attending class, Kenneth lives in an art center which he founded with his five brothers. It's a way of combining his studies with his passion for painting. Architecture is not only building um, buildings, if I can say, but it involves like, uh, things like expressing your ideas by drawing. So it's amazing to, to link the two professions together. Architects, urban planners and technicians represent the future reconstruction of Rwanda. The government encourages the courses to continue the modernization of the country. A grant of $9 million from the AFDB has funded educational material, facilities and classes. It is going to produce the students uh, or yeah, the employees who are capable, who have the knowledge to go and uh, contribute to the development of the country. We need to move from an agriculture-based economy to a knowledge-based economy. There's another area of expertise that's being developed within the framework of the strategic plan of the country, information and communication technology. In downtown Kigali, the Carnegie Mellon University, or CMU, is home to one of five African centers of excellence in the ICT field. On the top floor, this business startup called the Key Lab aims to strengthen ties between the university courses and industry. Meanwhile, a future campus is under construction and will be completed in 2016, with funding of nearly $15 million from the AFDB. So that partnership of AFDB is very key into this program, 
because as you know, yes, we can have uh, great brands, we can have uh, everything, but also we need the infrastructures to support the university. Thanks to a grant awarded under the program, Rafiki is one of the first group of students to attend the Masters in Information and Communication Technology course, which began in 2012. He runs a company and has been able to profit from his studies. After taking courses at CMU, we have changed the business model. Now we develop solutions and we go present them to our client. According to Rafiki, it will soon no longer be necessary to turn to India, Europe or the United States to develop digital solutions. So we'll be boosting the ICT sector in this region and economically we can be hub of ICT, not only in Africa, maybe also in the world. With its regional focus, the program welcomes students from East Africa, such as Lynn from Uganda. She would like the scholarships made available to other countries. What I would like to see is more people partnering with CMU because, um, because of the fees. The fees are a bit much for, for Africans. Um, outside Rwanda because Rwanda offers a, a scholarship for Rwandese and then a 50% for the rest of us. So if more, if more people came together and partnered with what CMU is doing here in, in Africa, then a lot more students would have an opportunity to, to get this kind of quality education. When the center is completed, nearly 1,200 high-level jobs will be created in information and communication technology a sector expected to accelerate the growth in Rwanda by improving its competitiveness and with a direct impact on poverty. <laughs> <laughs>